Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer him glory and praise. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Devoratorium. My name is Darnay Devore, and I'm going to be your host. On today's episode, Father Abraham Part 2. That's Father Abraham Part 2. Now, in the previous video, we would identified a list of well-known facts about who Abraham was or who he is, what kind of heart he had, and his relationship with God. We're, gonna, we're doing three videos, all right? The first one was, who was he? Who was Abraham? Number two, this video, how was Abraham saved or considered righteous? Number three will be how his promise affects all of us. So today in part two, how was Abraham saved? Or another way to put it is how was Abraham considered righteous? Now, Galatians 3 verse 6 and Romans 4 verse 3 is the answer and they both say the exact same thing they both say that abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness i could stop right there and wrap this whole video up that's how abraham was saved or considered righteous rather is he believed god he had faith in god but we're going to delve into this a little bit deeper in both these scriptures paul is quoting directly from moses in Genesis 15, verse 6, which again says the same thing. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, what does righteousness mean? Let's look up righteous. All it means is morally right and justifiable. And in this situation, it's morally right or justifiable before God himself. We're going to delve a little bit more into the context of these two verses. In the Galatians 3 verse 6 uh, scripture, where it's talking about Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, the context behind that is Paul is admonishing the church in Galatia because they have been swayed by others who are attempting to add keeping the law to the gospel of Jesus as the way of salvation. In Galatians 3, verse 1 through 6, bullet point, Paul calls them foolish and asks them if they receive the very spirit of God through faith or works of the flesh. And that's another way of saying through the law. In Galatians 3, verse 10 through 13, Paul says you can't be justified before God if you rely on the law. He calls the law a curse and everyone under the law is cursed. He proclaims that Jesus redeemed us from that very curse, the curse of the law. Galatians 3 and 17 talks about the law coming 430 years after Abraham. But that law that came after Abraham did not set aside the promise God already made to Abraham. What promise that God made to Abraham? That he would have a mighty nation and that all people will be blessed through him. All nations will be blessed through him. That was a promise given. This is what Paul is trying to show the church in, church in Galatia is that your salvation is based on the promise God made to Abraham that all families on this earth, on this in this world, would be blessed through him, not through the law, okay? The law came 430 years after Abraham, so how, did, how could the law have worked to Abraham's salvation? How could the law have been effective for Abraham to be declared righteous? It wasn't. This is Paul's point. This is his point to the church in Galatia as well. The things that the things that you received, you received through faith, not through works of the law. That's the whole theme of what's going on here is that the law and faith, there's a difference. They don't go together. There's a purpose for the law, but the purpose of faith is what leads you to salvation. In Galatians chapter 3, 23 through 27, Paul says we were locked up held in custody of the law until the faith came. 
Now that faith in Jesus, that is the faith in Jesus has come. We are fully justified before God and are now his children. We are now children of God himself because of the faith that has come. The faith that has come is a faith in who? The faith in Jesus Christ. So in our Galatians 3 passage, we have that Paul is telling the church in Galatia, you guys are foolish because you're trying to, you're being taught that you need to have the law with your faith. It's been faith from the beginning to the end. You have Paul telling people that you're under a curse. The law is a curse. If that's what you're trying to uh, uh, put yourselves back under, that is a curse that you're under. The law came 430 years, 430 years after Abraham and has nothing to do with the promise God made to Abraham before the law came. And that promise God made to Abraham was that the whole world, okay, every nation will be blessed through Abraham. Now, the context of chapter four, Romans chapter four, verse one through three, Paul says that if Abraham were justified by his works, that is obeying any kind of law, he would have something to brag about, as in, look what I did. I obeyed the law. I kept the law perfectly. I'm perfect now. Yeah, you're bragging before God in that regard, but God's not having it. He's not having it at all. Salvation is completely and utterly from God. That is it, not us. In Romans 4, one, uh, 4 through 5, Paul says that for people who work, that is obeying the law, whatever they receive is an obligation. It's like a wage. You go to work, right? You get paid, but that payment is an obligation because you've earned it, all right? You've done good, so here is what you are paid. That's not how salvation works. Paul continues on that same passage, the one who doesn't work but trust in God, their faith is credited as righteousness. Again, this takes us back to Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Verse 13, chapter four, Abraham and his offspring were made promises by God that had nothing to do with the law, nothing to do with the law, because once again, Abraham was 430 years before the law. It only had to do with their faith. Paul is reminding the church in Rome, this is, what's, this is how this works. It's not about the law. The law just shows you where your sin is, but the faith in Jesus, that is how you obtain righteousness. So how was Abraham saved? Paul says it again and again. Abraham was saved through faith. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Why is this an important message for the Jews? Because they were looking for salvation through the law. John 8 and 56 says, even Abraham was looking forward to the day Jesus arrived, not to the law. Abraham was not looking forward to the law. He was looking forward to when Jesus arrived because Jesus is the perfecter of Abraham's faith. James 2, 23 through 24. Let's read that together. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, right? That's the verse we've been reading again and again, but there's more. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. What? Wait a minute. We just read again and again that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness that there aren't any works or there's no law that you have to follow in order to obtain that righteousness, right? Does this verse contradict Paul discussing faith only? No, it's a different audience. There's a totally different context between the book of James and Romans and Galatians when Paul is speaking to that audience. Paul's audience was attempting to secure salvation through works of the law. James was attempting to show his audience that faith always has action. It's utilized as a verb. Faith has action just as love has action. I've used this example before. 
You can tell me you love your children, for instance. Oh, I love my kids. I love my kids. But if you ignore them, if you neglect them, you don't feed them, you don't bathe them, you don't help them with their homework, you have nothing to do with them, then you telling me you love them means nothing. There's nothing to support that love. And it does not benefit at all your kids. But if you tell me you love them and you're showing it every day, every day you're helping them, you're loving on them, you're encouraging them, you're building them up, you're showing them how to tie their shoes, how to stand up straight and, and, and be young men and young women. Well, that's love. That love has action. And what James is saying is your faith has action as well. James is not telling them to work for their salvation or to obey any commandments for their salvation. Matter of fact, here's the context. In James chapter 2, 14 through 17, James gives the example of someone with no food or clothing. As a person of faith, do you feed and clothe them, which is an action, or do you basically wish them well and continue on your way? Yeah, you're going to help them out. You're going to help them out. This has nothing to do with works of the law but rather a love for our fellow man, a love that grows from our faith in Jesus. Now, maybe Jesus has chosen you to help provide for this individual that you've encountered and thus be an example to them of what Jesus has to offer, which is an entire community of faithful, the faithful who love others unconditionally, because let's face it, we've been taught how to love people unconditionally because our savior, our King Jesus, has done that for us. So we pass it along. But this has nothing to do with works of the law or your actions saving you. This is everything to do with your faith. What does it look like in action? James 2 verse 19, believing in God is no big deal. Just having faith in God is not that big of a deal because even the demons agree that God exists. But let me ask you this. The demons that believe that God exists, how does that change their actions? Have they repented? Are they now helping people? No, no, nothing of the sort. In contrast, how does your belief, how does your faith affect your life? Okay, in other words, what works demonstrate your belief? When you, whoever in your life that you love, what do you do? In what ways do you demonstrate that love? How does your action demonstrate or show your faith? Abraham showed his faith by following God when God told him to get up, take his family and go. Abraham showed his faith or proved his faith rather, I should say, when he was going to sacrifice his son Isaac. That's how Abraham was proving his faith, but the faith was already there. But Abraham's actions did not earn him righteousness. His faith earned him righteousness. His actions proved his faith. So James, the book of James and Paul, they're actually complimenting one another. They're talking to different audiences on the opposite side of the same coin. Faith is required for your salvation. That is it. Faith is required for righteousness, but your faith will always produce actions. So today's video, how was Abraham declared righteous or how was Abraham saved? It was through faith and faith alone. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Stay tuned for the next video.